Um, the other cognitive trap, I think, is the tendency to focus on new technology itself rather than focusing on problems and, and adopting a kind of technology neutral approach to regulation. Um, and I'll give an example of, of what was a new technology at the time, which was public libraries. Uh, people argued against um, the funding and introduction of public libraries in the United Kingdom in 1850, at least some people did, on the grounds that libraries could give rise to unhealthy social agitation. Um, I just don't think that was the right way to think about it. It's possible that they did, did give rise to some social agitation that may have been healthy or unhealthy. Um, and I think it's also interesting that public libraries contain material that is dangerous. Uh, there are books on chemistry, physics, biology that could be used to develop weapons of mass destruction, for example. They contain a lot of information that today we would consider false, and they contain a lot of information that, um, judged by today's norms, we would consider biased. But we decided to go all in and to, to give the public access to public libraries, and I think that was the right thing to do. Um, Turn, turning to large language models, you can kind of think of them as, as an approximate intelligent library. And I think, so therefore we have to be careful um, in a sense to keep our heritage intact. And, and sure, we need to guard against bias in certain applications or against misinformation. But I think it would be futile to try and to try to remove all of that material from the training data. That just wouldn't be a, a practical way of thinking about it. 